everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie. Okay, so today I have Ikea hacks for you guys. That is my favorite thing to make, so I've got a bunch of projects to share with you that I'm so excited about. And this video is a collaboration with Anna Sophia of Fia Garcia DIY. Her channel is so gorgeous. She makes beautiful on-trend DIYs that are also super affordable. She's great at Ikea hacks, thrift flips, another thing that I love, and Dollar Tree DIYs. Everything that she makes is absolutely stunning. So make sure you check out her Ikea hacks that she is sharing today. I promise you will not be disappointed. As always, before I start my Ikea hacks, I'm going to be doing a quick little haul with you guys today just to show you the items that I'll be using and how much they cost. So I picked up one of these Sorzo rugs. This is $3.99. I used this in another Ikea hack. It's one of my favorite things to use for these projects because it is so cheap at $3.99 and there are so many different things that you can do with it. I also picked up one of these just plain white bowls. I'll link everything down below by the way, but this was 79 cents. I've got these handles in two different sizes. The bigger size was $11 and this smaller one was $7. This plain gray tray was super cheap at just $1.99 and I cannot wait to show you guys how I'm going to transform this. And these pillar candles were a last minute addition. They were $5.99 for a pack of three. I fell in love with the colors. I just knew I had to use them for something. Okay, so those are all of the Ikea items that I'll be using in the projects today. So let's go ahead and get started. So this video is actually part of a new series on my channel called Can I Hack It? where I challenge myself to Ikea hack decor from trendy stores and today is all about Urban Outfitters. The first item that caught my eye was this gorgeous tray. To get started, I'm using the $1.99 tray and I wanted to give it a nice light base, so I gave it a couple of coats of this matte white spray paint. Once it was all dry, it was time for the fun part and I'll be using acrylic paint for this project. And I have this paint set that had the perfect colors. So as soon as I saw the tray, I was reminded of a really cool tutorial by Tina Lay, where she made a painting that had a similar tone to it. Unfortunately, I was using completely different materials, so mine turned out pretty different, but still gorgeous. So I started by mixing some water in with each of the paints that I wanted to use, and then I poured them in sections across the tray. You can use a paintbrush to push the paint around to make sure that the area is fully covered, or you can just pick it up and swirl it around. Keep adding more paint as you'd like, and also keep a container handy nearby so you can pour the excess paint into it. I realized pretty quickly that my paint was super watery, so it wasn't going to give the effect that I was originally going for, but as with any DIY, I just decided to go with it and see where I ended up. Each time I poured a new paint color down, I used this flat tool to blend the colors, and then I picked the tray up and swirled it, then poured the excess off. And these are the main steps that I used throughout this process. At first I was really nervous seeing the colors run together like they were, but then they started to take on a really cool tone and have some pretty patterns going on. So to lighten things up, I poured more white paint over top of the colors and then continued on with the process. At this point, don't worry about the edges of the tray too much because we'll be fixing those at the end. And another fun option when you're working on something like this is to use a hair dryer to blow the paint around lightly, which will give a really cool effect in the paint. So after repeating these steps multiple times and adding and swirling the paint until I was happy with the way it looked, I poured off most of the excess, then got to work on the edges. Because the watered down paint was just dripping down the edge into the tray, I went in with some not watered down paint and just blended the edges together. Then I let it dry overnight until there were no wet spots anywhere. To seal this, you have a few options like resin or polyurethane if you want to make it really resistant to water and other damage. But since mine will be getting light use, I'm going to just seal it with a waterproof clear coat of Mod Podge. This goes on looking white, but it will dry clear. Again, I let that dry and the last step is to add these gorgeous handles and I'm going to attach them using E6000 glue because the handles are fairly heavy and I want them to be well bonded. I didn't really trust hot glue at all with this, so if you're going to do this project, I would recommend using super glue. I started with the longer handles, making sure to press down as I attached them. Again, let this cure and dry for 24 hours. And now you have a really high-end looking tray. I'm still honestly in shock with how this turned out. And I got some shots of it at golden hour and I couldn't believe that it started out as a $2 plain tray. Thank you. 
Okay, next up, I saw this catch-all dish on the Urban Outfitters website, and I love anything terracotta. I think it's so much fun to style, and the simplicity of it really seemed like it was something I could recreate. So I'm using this bowl that I got for 79 cents and this terracotta flat spray paint. This stuff is so cool. It looks seriously like real terracotta once it's dried. So I gave my bowl a couple of coats of this as well. I'm also using these wood knobs. They're just unfinished and they do come with hardware, but we're not going to be using that. We're just going to be using them as is. So I gave those a couple of coats of paint as well. I noticed on the original that it was kind of aged a little bit with some darker spots. So I took some dark gray paint and a paintbrush and I just sort of put it on in random spots very lightly. And then I took some sandpaper to just age it a little bit more and make it look a little bit more authentic. The last step is to glue on these little feet here and I'm going to be using E6000 again and just placing them in sort of a triangle shape and that is it. I love wall hangings, especially boho wall hangings. So this one really caught my eye and I immediately thought of the Sorzo rug, which I used for another wall hanging in my other Ikea hack video. It has this pattern on it. So I'm going to actually be cutting down the center of each of these lines to make it easy for myself because I wanted to make this a little bit narrower. Then I measured up from the crease that was in it a couple of inches and that's going to be where I fold it down to put the dowel inside to hang it up. So I connected these lines and then I just cut it out and then I'll get started on the actual design process. So what you're going to need for this is a latch hook tool, which I got a pack of on Amazon. So I will link those down below. You'll also need some yarn and you'll need a little piece of paper or cardboard or something like that to help you cut your yarn out. So this is the latch hook tool here, which brought me right back to my childhood, making latch hook rugs all the time. So I started out with my first color of yarn, wrapping it around my little piece of paper, and you're going to cut this at the top and the bottom when you're done so that you have a bunch of pieces of yarn that are like three inches long each. And now for the latch hook process, this is a tightly woven rug. So it was a little difficult, but not too hard. You wanna slide your hook under one of the loops of the rug and then you wanna push it all the way up so that the latch goes through the loop. So you can see here both the hook and the latch are under the loop. Then take one of your pieces of yarn and slide it under the latch hook tool. Bring both of the ends up so that it's even on each side. Then pull your tool slightly down so the latch starts to come up a little bit. Then you wanna take your yarn and fold it over top of the latch and then pull on your tool so that it closes and then just keep pulling. Normally with latch hook, you would pull all the way through so the ends of the yarn come through. But for this part, we're going to stop halfway so that it kind of creates this little like bubble of yarn instead of pulling it all the way through and having the ends poking out. So again, just slide your hook under one of the loops of the rug and then bring your yarn up and over the latch and pull through. And you can watch this part a few times if you want to get the technique down, but once you get it going, it is so easy and goes so quickly. I would say the hardest part about this was getting the hook under the tight weave of the rug, but it was actually a lot easier than I imagined it would be. So I did two rows of this initial color and I think it looks so cool already and I'm really excited about how this is turning out. Next up on the original hanging, there was a triangle. So I just measured up from my bottom row of yarn and then I drew a triangle trying to make it similar to the one in the original. Now this is the most tedious part. What you're gonna do is basically outline the edges of the triangle. And this time when you're doing the latch hook, you're gonna pull the yarn all the way through. So we're not gonna stop halfway. So this is what you can see. This is like the regular latch hook technique. And there are tons of YouTube tutorials um, that go into this in more detail. But basically what you wanna do is just keep pulling the yarn through so that you have your triangle shape. And then I'm gonna go in and fill in the inner part. This is a great project for putting on a show. I've been rewatching Jane the Virgin. It's one of my favorite shows. So I just popped that on Netflix and got to work on this and it went by pretty quickly. Then I decided to trim it up a little bit because it was feeling a little bit long for me. So I just trimmed this down so that it was a little bit shorter and tighter and closer to the rug. Next, I made another line of this yellow yarn across the crease in the middle to kind of cover it up. And honestly, after doing the triangle, going back to this first step was like a cinch. It went by so fast and felt so much easier. Next, I want to add another triangle and to make things quicker, I painted it on and you could totally do this for all of the triangles if you want. If you wanna save yourself some time, just paint them on and then maybe do the latch hook for the rows of colors. It's really up to you. 
And then at the top, I finished it off with another two layers of the yellow yarn. Then I flipped it over and I took a dowel and just put it in that original crease. And then I used some Fabri-Tac glue to glue the fabric together to keep the dowel in place. Added some string on it and then I was ready to hang it up. And I think it looks so cool. This last one is a bonus project, not from Urban Outfitters, just something that's really trendy right now. So I'm using these candles because I loved the colors and they were cheap and I knew I could make trendy candles for so much less than they're sold for. So I melted each candle down in a jar using the double boiler method. And then I also have these molds that I got. So these are silicone cloud shaped molds, which are super cool. And in order to use these, what I'm going to do is just flip them over and make a small hole in the bottom. You can use a needle or any other sharp tool, just be careful. And you just need to make a small hole and then you're gonna take a wick and put it through that hole. So I just pushed it through the bottom and then I kind of pulled it back up and folded the bottom part of the wick across so that this could sit flat. And then once the wax had totally melted in that jar, I went ahead and poured it into the molds. And how cool is this? This wax is already the perfect color that I wanted it to be. I didn't have to create any unique colors using dye or anything like that. It's just pre-made for me. So once I filled that up, I just cut the wick and then I used this kitchen clip, which has a hole in the middle, to slide it over the wick and then that's going to keep it centered as the wax begins to dry. So I did this bigger one in that like darker gray color and then I did a white one as well. And then I let them cool completely and then all you have to do is pop them out of these molds they come out so easily and they look amazing and then I also got this second mold because shell decor is like super in right now there are shell pillows and vases and literally everything shell so I got this plastic mold and it just comes apart like this and it comes with these rubber bands that you wrap around it to keep it tight I also greased the inside with a little bit of olive oil because that was recommended. And then it also has a hole in the bottom that you can stick the wick down. I thought this was so cool. So the wick felt a little bit loose, so I just added a piece of clay to make sure that the wax wasn't going to like drip down on either side of the wick, and that worked perfectly. And then I just poured my wax inside when it was ready, and it popped out so easily after I let it cool for a while. And this is one of my favorite things, and I can't wait to reuse the mold over and over. I hope you guys enjoyed these Ikea hacks and my new series, Can I Hack It? Make sure you subscribe because the next episode is going to be Ikea hacking anthropology decor. So I can't wait to share it. And also make sure you go over to Anna Sophia's channel to check out her video. I can't wait to see it myself and I will see you guys really soon.